Hello, this is Dread, and in today's video topic, we're going to be going over Fire Crit Warpath. And I just want to start this off with two disclaimers. First thing off, I recorded this on the, of course, the Crash the Server event party server. Uh, we've been having fun with that. And I just want to make sure you guys know I haven't been pushing these builds much. Normally, I'd push these builds like 200, 300 corruption and then showcase them. But I don't really have that much time because I need to talk a bit about a lot of different things because there's a lot of stuff being changed with this patch. So I had to move on to the next build. So another thing as well, what are you guys up to? What are you guys playing? I want to know what you guys are playing. I want to see like what everyone else is doing, right? Because I want to see if there's anything else I need to cover, right? Now, with all that being said, let's get in the video actually here. So, Fire Crit Warpath, right? If you don't know, adaptive melee change happened. So, that means that the flat physical damage that was on every single weapon type has been changed into adaptive melee damage. That means if your attack has the fire tag, it will turn into fire damage. If you have the cold tag, it'll turn it cold, void, necrotic, whatever, right? And this has a lot of implications in the future. And one of these builds that it buffs immensely is Fire Crit Warpath. Why is that? Well, now the fire node inside Warpath, it takes off the physical node and makes it into a full fire skill. And that is important because there is a node inside Warpath that not only gives you 10% base crit while you're wielding a sword, which we are, it also gives you 100% fire penetration globally while you're holding a scepter. Normally, this is used while, of course, uh, igniting, but thanks to a lot of the ailment changes, it makes this fire pen a lot less useful for ignite, and it makes it a lot more useful for, of course, crit. And crit just got a lot better. Why is that? Well, Ivory got significantly buffed. Now you must be wondering, Dread, nothing about this changed. You are correct. Other than the base damage on it, which is now a bunch of flat adaptive damage, like melee adaptive, meaning since we have a fire skill, it becomes fire damage, which means instead of only getting like 40 flat, we get like 70 fire flat. This also applies to our scepter. Our scepter has like 55 melee adaptive flat. Now it has 55 fire flat when we use it with Warpath. And turns out this makes scaling so much easier in general. It makes it so that, of course, Fire Crit Warpath works really well. And there's not really much else. That, that's it for Fire Crit Warpath. This is a build that I've been wanting to play for a very long time. But as soon as I heard that the adaptive melee changes were down the pipeline, I wanted to, of course, make this build. And how does it feel versus all the other Warpath builds? Well, it is insanely cheap to get started. All I needed was an Ivory. Everything else was easy to put together. As soon as I was able to set up Warpath with a crit, uh, with of course the sword, I was able to just zoom through monoliths. It feels amazing. Uh, it feels really tanky as well, because we're of course a Paladin and with the buff to of course, what is it called? Uh, Throne of Ambition, yes. Instead of giving you a bunch of increased damage for fire and increased armor, now it gives you 40% more fire and 40% more armor. And that is great because we're already scaling armor. So 40% more armor is definitely better than 200% increased armor for us. And of course, 40% more fire damage is definitely better than 200% increased fire damage. So it is a giga buff to us, meaning that Throne of Ambition stacks makes deleting rares and of course bosses a much easier endeavor. This is in like really crappy day one garbage gear other than the Eye of Reen. And I'm pretty proud of the results. Uh, nonetheless and overall fun build definitely a good starter uh i would say that it's like on the same level as void warpath um the biggest problem like i said is this is on really cheap gear day one stuff but that means it's also very easy to get started for new people right a lot of people they complain about my videos are like oh dread your builds are like really invested well here you go. Here's a build that's not really that much invested in, and it's pretty easy and simple to get started with. It's pretty lazy as well. Uh, you don't have to do that much management. Of course, you have reversal. Of course, you have sigils. But if you want, you only have to use those during boss fights if you really want to. You don't really have to use them while, mon uh, while monolith farming. Now, with all that being said, let's go in game. If you haven't already, leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel because that's the best way of supporting me. 
let's go in game, talk about the build in more detail. All right, here we are in game with the build. First thing I want to point out is there's not going to be a planner for this build because there's a lot of changes with everything going on. So just screen cap in the video. I'll make sure to leave everything up for long enough, just like we did back when the planner didn't exist, right? So uh, TLDR, or path, literally the same setup that we always run. Everything works exactly the same. Fire pen sword, global base crit, more fire damage against ignited enemies, which is great because all of our damage is fire now. It's not like this weird amalgam of fizz and fire. And of course, reckless spin so we can get our mana cost to zero. Pretty simple, right? Reversal, meta setup, of course. Couldn't expect anything less. Sigils, also meta setup. Couldn't expect any less. Holy Aura, same thing. Attack speed, fire damage. I ran fire bursts mainly just for extra shred stacks. Uh, on single target, we just shred uh, armor way quicker with this. Then lunge. Right now, lunge is bugged. I can hold it down and like not be able to target. This is a bug. This will be fixed. It's really annoying right now, but I still really like lunge because you get access to Dawn Charge, one of the strongest nodes in the game, in my humble opinion, as being able to just gain 40% of your missing health with one lunge is pretty strong. Yeah, overall, lunge is great. 15% coal, good skill. You can use Shield Rush here. You could use anything that you want. I just like lunge. Now, for passives, I'm just going to hover over them really quickly for you to take screenshots as it makes it way easier on me. Of course, this is very easy. But to be honest, if you've been watching my Warpath stuff of late, um, you'll know that everything's like the same as it normally is. Of course it is, right? Just all the damage, all the armor, all that. This is a very low level character. I mainly made this so that I could show you guys what it looks like at very low amounts of investment. Right now, skills aren't showing in the town. Like this, this Holy Aura is actually not on, so I'm not getting the res from it. So uh, that's why my res looks a little weird, right? This is the bare bones character so far. Now for gearing, a uh, pretty shitty helmet, just to increase damage. You could eventually get uh, a lot of different stuff, mainly melee damage specifically. Amulet, this is like an okay amulet. Wanted to crit multi, but got element, uh, elemental damage instead. Weapon, you want a scepter. Obsidian is the best. Attack speed, melee fire and ignite and then whatever else you want to put there doesn't matter weapon ivory you can use any sword whatsoever with like base crit with attack speed in theory eventually you can get lp versions of these and go ham with like attack speed specifically but with that chance to gain a stack of reen's ire on crit we can get up to about i think it's like 10 to 20 stacks and that's about 100 percent extra crit multi on top of all that this means that we don't have to invest into a saurian step if we don't want to which means that of course uh we can use different kinds of boot options like the one that gives us more damage with traveling skills but of course we can't really use that right now because the arena is disabled for this event ring siphon of anguish that melee damage leeches life is insane because it's global there's not really many other sources of fire damage leech in the tree so having that exist is great on a ring of course makes our enemies take 16 percent increase of melee damage they remove doom effect from the game so now it's just increased uh, void penetration with doom which is absolutely worthless um uh, Plated belt here, cleanse. Poisons are really strong right now for absolutely no reason. Ailments in general. Being able to cleanse the ailments, very important in the end game right now. Fire damage, of course, of course. You can run mana regen if you're feeling like so your mana is a little weird. And then HP HP, but fire damage is pretty strong. Ring, literally, I just wanted as much crit as humanly possible. You just want to try to make sure you can reach that crit. When I'm spinning, I'm at like 60% crit right now. And that's with like a very cheap setup. Eventually, when you get more. Uh, stuff on your stuff like you can run like this with base crit instead of that melee fire and that could essentially just fix your crit uh, of course gloves crit attack speed hp fizz res because i had it why not boots movement speed strength if you can't find anything to put in your prefixes strength is pretty good this increases your armor and makes you tankier and of course uh for a relic here strength crit res could have been on a better relic, but like I said, my gear is absolute garbage. 
We did farm up for a Throne of Ambition because this is very strong for us. 2% more fire damage per stack of Ambition. We get up to 20, which means that we get 40% more fire damage and more armor. Uh, this is bad for any build that was using it to pad their stats, but this is very strong for builds like mine that was already investing into fire damage and was already investing into armor. So overall, Throne of Ambition, very strong piece of the build. Other idols, I'm using a Shred on Fire hit with this. Uh, this is all the Shred that I need. Uh, you only need one of these, and since Warpath hits so fast, we're essentially at Shred Cap anyways. And everything else is just a bunch of res idols because my gear is absolute garbage. My uh, blessings are meh. Of course, eventually you want like ore path area idols so that you can kind of like spin to win. You want a throne of ambition, one of these with shred, and then like four grand solar idols. But of course, right now I'm not in the, I don't have the room for it. Blessings, crit multi. Of course, this could eventually be crit chance. We get so much crit multi from the Eye of Rain that this could e easily be crit chance, and it'll probably end up being more damage in the end. Uh, this could be whatever you want. This, of course, crit strike avoidance saves me a few points. Great. Increased armor, absolutely amazing. 69%, of course, the funny number. And for the last one, armor roll channeling. This is like the go to for any Warpath build. Yeah. That's pretty much it for the character today. Uh, have a wonderful rest of the day wherever you're at. Bye.